Hey YouTube, the Batrium software has really been my key monitoring solution uh, for, for monitoring my solar system, checking the output, uh, the amount of power generated. It's charging the battery bank around 4,000 watts, and you can see that today I discharged 3.4 kilowatts and charged 12 kilowatts. These statistics are wonderful, but the problem is that I can't see the total output of my solar system per day because I see I'm charging at 3,800 but I don't know how much is coming out of the panels that's, that's going through the inverter into the house, which wouldn't be reported in this figure. Now I realize the Batrium is intended to monitor your battery bank, not your entire system. I was doing some browsing around the internet and came across this EKM uh, watt. It's just a kilowatt hour meter. It does the same thing as the meter they put on your home to tell how much power you've used from the grid. Um, except this one is just a bit smaller. It's, it's rated for 100 amps. Um, and it's also for US usage, so we'll either do 120 or 240 volts. Um, and the way this works is you take your uh, line 1 and line 2, so your red and black lead, and you'll put them through, through these two holes, and you'll see there is uh, some screws. So you tighten these screws down, and they're supposed to pierce into the insulation and make contact with those two legs, um, supplying this meter with 240 volts. Your neutral and your ground will go around the side and bypass the meter. Um, and this will basically tell you how many kilowatt hours you're using. Uh, it's a cumulative, so you'd have to go out and look at it. Say I look at it today and it's at 10, and then I go look at it tomorrow and it reads 20, so I'll know that I use 10 kilowatt hours. But what I want to be able to do is to tell the amount of power I'm actually saving after all the efficiency losses from the wiring, the batteries, the charge controller, and of course the efficiency loss from the inverter. So I'm going to take this out to the battery shed today and walk you through how to install it and see how it works. All right, so it's very tight in here, but I'm still gonna try to make this happen and hopefully it'll be somewhat useful. Um, so down here is where the wire cable comes off my inverter. This is 6-3 copper wire, so it's got a leg one, a leg two, a neutral, and then it's got a ground. Um, and that goes down here to this box, just a junction box, and then it goes out into the home. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm probably going to strip this insulation back to about here, and then I'm gonna tack on that meter right here below this junction box and just run out the individual wires from this box down to the meter. So before I shut anything off, um, the first thing I want to do is switch all my loads back to the line. So back to the utility. That way I can switch my inverter off without interrupting anything. So I'll switch all these down to the line setting. So next I'll switch the inverter off. So I'll remove, first I'll loosen these two screws here. This wire didn't fit in these clamps very well anyway. It's a little too big for them. And there's two screws up here. Hold this on. This is the Ames uh, Global LF inverter, by the way. Split phase, split phase 10,000 watts. Pull this down. So the next thing I want to do is make sure that none of these leads are hot because there's nothing worse than sticking your finger. 240 volts, which I have never done and don't want to find out. So, let's see, that one's off. That one's off. That one's off. And I'll just measure both of them to ground. Alright, so we're good to go. These terminals are annoyingly small for the gauge wire they're holding. You'd expect them to be a little bigger, but they're not. That's a pretty tight fit. I'm not even quite sure how I got that through the first time to begin with. Probably strip it down to, it's down to about here maybe and I'll see how that looks. Okay, and you'll see I got my three conductors here. So the way this thing mounts is it just clips on the back of a standard uh, mini DIN rail. And there's just a little tab on the bottom here you pull to release it. So I know I've got a stud here where this little chalk line is, and then this is actually double reinforced. Alright, so the only two wires I care about are the leg one and leg two, which are red and black. Should just be able to feed them up through here, just like this. Yeah, see, it helps if, you're, if your wires are straight because it's, it's hitting into the side there. So there we have it, and I'll just 
mount that on just like pull these out yeah, these wires are not very flexible at all all right so we'll just reconnect these wires I'm just gonna leave that box off for now neutral goes in tighten it down Leg two goes in. Tighten it down. Leg one goes in. Tighten it down. Ultimately, you would put this in an enclosure, and they do sell a separate enclosure. It's like an extra 50 bucks or 60 bucks or so for it. Um, so I opted not to get it, but I do recommend it. And I probably would get it at some point as well. Grounds back in. Double check the tightness of all my connections. They're all good. Yep. Then down here, I'm just going to put this little clamp on to hold these wires in place just for some extra support. So the next step is I have to tighten down these line one and line two screws somehow so this screw pierces through this insulation. So the way I'm going to do that is uh, these screws are pretty small so you need a number one Phillips and then it's hard to see but I'm holding the red wire right in the center back part of the holder. Just tighten this down. And you can feel when it hits the wire, but you want to keep going because it's got to pierce the insulation. And same with line two. I'm going to press it back so it's in the back part of the holder. And my phone is overheating, so my flash shut off. But tighten this down as well. Feels pretty tight. They're both pretty tight. And there we have it zero kilowatts and this is not resettable by the way so once it starts incrementing you cannot reset it it's done intentionally that way to prevent people from tampering with it because um, I have read that some people use these for like apartment complexes where they need to split out electric uses per tenant so I'm gonna go down in the basement and turn the circuits back on and hopefully we'll see some usage all right so circuits are on I'm not seeing any usage yet though I don't really have a heavy load on it Maybe I will go turn the air conditioning on so we can get, oh, the clothes dryer. I'll put the clothes dryer on so we can get some sort of load on it. All right, so there you go. I did put a pretty heavy load on, so here the fans are now running. But you'll see it is incrementing, so I've used four hundredths of a kilowatt so far. So I shut the dryer off just so you can hear what I'm saying while I finish this up. So the idea being that I can now see the amount of power I've produced after all efficiency losses are taken into account. So the amount of power on this meter will be exactly equivalent to the amount of power I would have spent if those appliances would be connected to the grid instead of connected to this inverter. Hopefully you found that helpful. I'm very, very excited to have this installed because I honestly don't know how much power I'm producing aside from what the Batrium tells me. And again, that's not taking into account what's used throughout the day. So if you'd like to get one of these set up for your system, I will put a link to where I purchased the item below. Otherwise, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'll probably come back out here later and, and, and tighten down these wires. I'm not sure I'm going to put this box back on. I kind of like it on because the terminals are protected, but then again, it's, it's so tight. The area in here is so tight, there's just nowhere really to put it. So anyway, there you have it.